Hello and good evening everyone. I welcome you all to India's largest e-learning platform and academy. And I welcome you all to my session of Antenna's MCQ series. And I welcome you all to our channel, Gate Conqueror channel. <coughs> How are you all here? We are into Antenna's MCQ series. It will be useful for Gate Engineering Services and other competitive exams and this is part 5 <clears throat> before we go in <clears throat> let me introduce myself I am GC ready <clears throat> having overall 15 years of experience teaching, guiding and mentoring GATE and ESC aspirants worked as motivation speaker Pan India from the past 12 years expert in field theory and communications and this is our official telegram channel for the GATE Conqueror channel and this is the link where you can join us on Telegram and you can access all the Gate Conqueror faculty including the legendary Kevin Rossa through this Telegram channel you can get a personal level assistance from all the faculty and the good news for all the Gate Conqueror followers is that we are strengthened in team now more educators have joined us we are ready to comprehensively cover the syllabus for Gate 2023, ESC 2023, we have enough faculty now to cover the complete syllabi. <clears throat> we are into Antenna's MCQ series and you know this can be a part of EMFT also and wherever Antenna's is there this particular series will be useful for you and at Gate Conqueror channel we had already having 106 hours of recording for EMFT and I'm planning to add 114 more hours so total course of 220 hours of recording will be available for EMFT details of which I had given in the previous session please go through the previous session MCQ4 where I had given the detailed uh, analysis of what we had covered in EMFT in the Gate Conqueror channel. <coughs> Sorry. So we'll start up with the questions. We'll start up with the questions, dear. The first question, in an n element array, in an n element array, for n file array case, main loop firing at theta is 0 degrees, Progressive phase shift alpha is given by most of you, those who know theory, will easily write this or can directly write this. It is identified array. And the main lobe is along theta is equal to 0 degrees. Main lobe is equal to, is along theta is 0 degrees. Progressive phase shift alpha is equal to minus beta d from theory. So directly you can say question number one, option B is the answer. But my question is if someone asks you to prove it, if someone asks you, asks you to prove it, then how do you prove that when theta is zero, alpha is minus beta d? How can you prove this dear? <coughs> you 
Yes. Can you tell me how can you prove this? Just waiting for your answer. How can you prove this? We know psi. Phase difference psi is equal to beta d cos theta plus alpha. Given it is an element, n element array. For maximum radiation, phase difference psi is 0. Substituting beta d cos theta plus alpha is equal to 0. Alpha is minus beta d cos theta. Maximum radiation is around theta is 0. Alpha is equal to minus beta d cos 0 is 1. Answer is minus beta d. Is that clear? Next question. In an n element array, in n element array, or n divided array case, alpha is equal to beta d, then theta is dash. In n divided array, then alpha is equal to beta d. Theta will be 180. Those who know theory can directly write the answer. But if someone asks you to prove this, how to do that? Phase difference psi is equal to beta d cos theta plus alpha. For maximum radiation, phase difference psi is 0. Plus beta d cos theta plus alpha is equal to 0. Given alpha is beta d, beta d cos theta plus beta d is 0. Beta d Beta d into cos theta minus 1 is equal to 0. This cos theta minus 1 is 0. Plus 1, sorry. Beta d into cos theta plus 1 is 0. Implies cos theta plus 1 is 0. Implies cos theta is minus 1. Theta is 180 degrees. This is proof. This is proof. Therefore, second question, option B is the answer. Srikan, good evening. Yes, option B is the answer. In an n element array, for broadside case, even it is n element array, Broadside array case F and BW is given by 2 by L by lambda radian in terms of degrees 1 radian 57.3 degrees 
114.6 by L by lambda degrees. So answer is 2 by L by lambda radian. Yes, correct. 114 by 6, 114.6 by L by lambda degree. True. 1 and 3. Question number 3. Option A is the answer. Question number 3. Option A is the answer. Is that clear? Next. In an N element array, broadside case, N element array, broadside array case, half power beam width, half power beam width is given by, one by L by lambda radian, 57.3 by L by lambda degree, 1 by L by lambda radian, 57.3 by L by lambda degree, 2 and 4. Option B is the answer. Question number 4. Option B is the answer. <clears throat> Question number 5. In N element array, end fire array case, Fn BW is given by, case is end fire array case, Fn BW is given by, 2 into under root of 2 by L by lambda radian 114.6 under root of 2 by L by lambda radian or 2 by L by lambda degree N element array end file case Fn BW 2 into under root of 2 by L by lambda radian 114.6 into under root of 2 by L by lambda degree 1 and 3 <coughs> 1 and 3 option A is the answer next try and find out this answer here just tell me this answer In an N element array, <clears throat> end fire case, half power beam width is given by N element array, end fire array case. Half power beam width is given by under root of 2 by L by lambda radian 57.3 under root of 2 by L by lambda degree. N element array, end fire array case. Half power beam width 
अंडर रूट ऑफ टू बाई एल बाई लामडा रेडियन फिफ्टी सेवन पॉइंट थ्री इंटू अंडर रूट ऑफ टू बाई एल बाई लामडा डिग्री टू एंड फोर टू एंड फोर ऑप्शन बी इज आंसर टू एंड फोर ऑप्शन बी इज आंसर नेक्स्ट वन एफ एन बी डब्ल्यू अपन एंड फायर अरे इतलेन डेल्ली इज इक्वल टू लैमडा इज डैश रेडियन गिवन इट इज एन एंड फायर अरे एफ एन बी डब्ल्यू एंड फायर अरे इज टू इंटू अंडर रूट ऑफ टू बाई एल बाई लैमडा रेडियन और वन फोर्टीन पॉइंट सिक्स अंडर रूट ऑफ टू बाई एल बाई लैमडा डिग्री तो गिवन दैट एल इज इक्वल टू लैमडा एफ एन बी डब्ल्यू इज इक्वल टू टू रूट टू रेडियन टू रूट टू रेडियन क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन ऑप्शन सी इज आंसर नेक्स्ट वन एफ एन बी डब्ल्यू अब एंटीफायर अरे इट अरे लेंथ एल इज इक्वल टू टेन लैमडा is dash radian try to find out dear yes everyone try to find out Let me know the answer. Let me know the answer, dear. Yes, very easy. What the answer? Given it is identified array. F N B W is two into under root of two by L by lambda radian. You want to find f n b w when l is equal to ten lambda. So two into under root of two by l is ten lambda. Two by ten. Two by root five radian. Two by root five radian. Two by root five radian. Question number eight. Option B is the answer. What the chance to win up to hundred percent profit? Sorry. Yes, I'm trying to check the video. Yeah. 
looks good half power beam width of identified array with array length l is equal to lambda is given it is an identified array and l is lambda half power beam width is under root of 2 by l by lambda but given that l is lambda half power beam width is root 2 radian question number 9 option b is the answer next question half power beam width of identified array with length l is equal to 10 lambda is given it is an identified array half power beam width is given by under root of 2 by l by lambda radian given l is 10 lambda under root of 2 by 10 radian it is 1 by root 5 radian question number 10 option b is the answer Yeah. Now we'll enter into binomial arrays. Some practice questions on binomial arrays. In binomial arrays, we feed the radiators with dash amplitude of current. Remember, dear, binomial array. is a sub case of broadside array with an equal amplitude with an equal amplitude what is given in binomial arrays we feed radiators with dash amplitude of current in binomial arrays we feed radiators with an equal amplitude of current unequal amplitude of current option b is the answer binomial array is an extension of as i told you just in the before question binomial array is an extension of broadside array the only difference is in broadside array we have equal amplitude in binomial array we have unequal amplitude binomial array is an extension of broadside array binomial arrays are proposed by binomial chebesh johnstone nun very interesting question try to answer any answer dear binomial arrays are proposed by most of the people think that binomial arrays are proposed by binomial which is wrong binomial arrays 
proposed by John Stone in 1929. He had given the array name as binomial array because the amplitudes of current in this array are fed according to the coefficients of binomial series. That is the greatness of John Stone that because that he had used this concept, he had given the name as binomial arrays. It was proposed by John Stone. Binomial arrays are proposed by John Stone. The amplitude of current, the amplitude of current fed to radiators, fed to radiators of n is equal to phi binomial array r. The amplitude of current fed to radiators of n is equal to phi binomial array r. Binomial array in binomial array the individual radiators are fed current decided by the coefficients of binomial series. Coefficients of binomial series. Now, how to remember coefficients of binomial series very easily is how to remember them is by using Pascal triangle. By using Pascal triangle. What is Pascal triangle? When n is 1, only one element will be there. n is 2, this 1 will be dropped on either side. And remember here binomial array is a case where you have unequal amplitude applied to the radiators. n is 3, 1 is dropped, 1 plus 1, 2 and 1, 3 radiators n is 4, 1 is drop, 1 plus 2, 3, 2 plus 1, 3 and 1. n is 5, 1 is drop, 1 plus 3, 4, 3 plus 3, 6, 3 plus 1, 4 and 1 is dropped. Now this triangle is called as Pascal triangle. If at all you forget the expansion of binomial series, this triangle expansion is very simple. Very clearly when n is 1, only one element is there. With one element, array cannot be formed. Two elements, each are having equal amplitude. But for binomial array, we need unequal amplitude. Therefore, with the two elements also, binomial array is not formed. N is 3, unequal amplitude, yes. So the important question here is, the important question here is, the minimum number of elements, the minimum number of elements required The minimum number of elements required to form a binomial array. The minimum number of elements required to form a binomial array 
are three. Three elements are required to form a binomial array. Very, very important question. Now, given that the amplitude of current fed to the radiators of a n is equal to 5 binomial array is n is 5. And the amplitudes that are fed to the radiators 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Five elements are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For this, if you feed 1 amp, for this 4 amp, for this 6, for this 4, for this 1. Five elements. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. That is how you feed it. That's why binomial array is a special case of broadside array. Where radiators are fed with currents of unequal amplitude. And that inequality is decided by the binomial series or is decided by the Pascal triangle and one thing you need to understand is they are unequal that's fine but they are in such a way that as you move towards the center the amplitudes increases that means in binomial array the center radiator will radiate more because it is fed with more current when compared to the corner radiators this is a technique by which we avoid side lobes. Once you avoid side lobes, this can be used in tracking purpose, defense services, and in radar. Tracking defense and in radar. Got it? That's why binomial arrays are very, very important here. Any doubts, please let me know. Any doubts, please let me know here. Good evening, Baska. How are you? You are missing out MCQ series. That will be useful for all competitive exams, Baska. Next question. The maximum spacing in binomial array is rules to form binomial array. If you want to form a binomial array, The amplitudes of current fed to radiators must be unequal. Second, there must be three radiators. Only then a binomial array is formed. There must be not two but three radiators. An equal amplitude must follow coefficients of binomial series. Must follow coefficients of binomial series. The minimum distance spacing between the elements 
the minimum spacing between the elements must be lambda by 2 these are the rules that we need to follow to form a binomial array the maximum spacing here maximum the maximum spacing in binomial array is lambda by 2 option b is the answer okay side lobe can be reduced completely repeat it side lobe can be reduced completely by using broadside array end by array binomial array all by using which of these array side lobes can be eliminated completely and it can be used for applications like radar Side loops can be reduced completely by using binomial arrays. Side loops can be reduced completely by using binomial arrays. Question number six, option C is the answer. Tapering. Tapering is the process of reducing what? Side loops, main loop, both or none. It's also a very important question here. Please try to answer. Everyone, try to answer here. Tapering is, is the process of reducing what? Tapering is a process that is used in binomial arrays. Tapering is a process that is used in binomial arrays. It is a process of reducing side lobes. The process of reducing side lobes is called as tapering. And we can reduce the side lobes by feeding more current, more current to the center and less current to the corners of an array. And this unequal distribution of current or amplitudes of current must follow the coefficients of binomial series. Then completely we can eliminate side lobes. In binomial arrays, what happens? Beam area increases, beam area decreases, directivity increases, directivity decreases. Advantage of binomial array is binomial array eliminates side lobes eliminates binomial array eliminates side lobes as it eliminates side lobes it is very much useful in the process of tracking and also it is useful in defense services It has applications in radar for object detection and also plays a very important role in avoiding false detection. But the problem or disadvantage The disadvantage with binomial arrays is it will eliminate side lobe that is advantage but beam area increases 
Omega A, beam area increases. Sorry. Sorry, dear. Directivity is 4 pi by omega A. The problem with binomial arrays is side lobes are eliminated, no problem. That's a good thing. But the directivity is decreases. The problem is directivity decreases. You can now less concentrate on a given area. Thereby, beam area increases. Previously, for linear array, this is the radiation pattern. For binomial array, this will be the radiation pattern. Directivity, the ability to concentrate in a given in a given direction decreases. And beam area increases. But advantage is no side lobes. Directivity decreases or beam area increases. Advantage is no side lobes. If you take linear array, you will have sharp directivity, but you will have side lobes, which are very fatal. In tracking systems or radar system, therefore we should eliminate this at the cost of directivity. So in binomial arrays, beam area increases, directivity decreases 1 and 4. 1 and 4. Question number 8. Option A is the answer. Next question. In radar applications, in radar applications, we use dash. In radar applications, we use dash. In radar applications, we use binomial arrays. The reason for using binomial arrays in radar applications is it eliminates side lobes. It eliminates side lobes completely. Therefore, in radar applications, we use what kind of arrays? Binomial arrays. Broadside array and identifier array will give you more directivity than binomial array. But the problem is they have side lobes, which may lead to false detection. Which may lead to false detection. Is it clear? Everyone, let me know. Is, is that clear? Next question, dear. In Hansen and Udiyad array, directivity, this is a special array called as Hansen and Udiyad array. In Hansen and Udiyad array, what happens to directivity? It increases. Rather, it increases by 78.9%. To be more clear, Hansen and Udiyad array, directivity increases by 78.9%. It increases. Option A is the answer. In Hansen and Udiyad array, the value of alpha is, if you take an identifier array, 
where maximum radiation is theta is 0 degrees, alpha is equal to minus beta d. But what Hansen and Udiyad have said is, instead of maintaining alpha is minus beta d, if you maintain alpha is minus beta d minus pi by n, where n are number of elements in the array, then he proposed that if you maintain this phase shift, and the directivity, or the, when, you maintain, when you maintain this phase difference, the directivity will be increased by 78.9%. That is what Hansen and Udiyad has said. So in Hansen and Udiyad array, the value of alpha is given by minus beta d minus pi by n. Minus beta d minus pi by n. Question number 11, option B is the answer. Folded dipole antenna, folded dipole antenna offers dash input impedance, high, low, both, none. Half wave dipole antenna offers an impedance of 73 ohm. What about folded dipole? Logic is very simple. If I apply current I to the half wave dipole or folded dipole to the current is I. But in folded dipole you have two dipoles. Therefore in each pole the current will be I by 2 and I by 2. The current will split thereby. Because of this split of current in folded dipole the impedance will increase n times of n squared times of 73 where n is number of poles in folded dipole there are two poles therefore impedance will become 4 times of 73 which is 292 ohms the folded dipole antenna offers dash input impedance for a folded dipole the input impedance is 292 ohm for a half wave dipole, the input impedance is 73 ohm. For folded dipole, 292 ohm. If a folded dipole antenna offers dash input impedance, it offers high input impedance. Clear? Folded dipole antenna offers high input impedance. Input impedance of folded dipole antenna is just now we had calculated for a folded dipole you will have two half wave dipoles in folded dipole we have two half wave dipoles Input impedance, the folded dipole is, de is decided by number of turns or number of poles in the dipole square into input impedance of half wave dipole. This is standard formula Zn is equal to n square times of Z11. So input impedance of folded dipole. In folded dipole, we have two poles, n is 2. If a Zn is 4 times n square, that is 4 times of 73, which is 292 ohm. Refer. Question number 13, option D is the answer. Question number 13, option D is the answer. Is that clear? Good, Bhaskar. One second, yeah.
Oh. One second, my dear. That is adjustable impedance, Bhaskar. I'll tell you it. See, if you are using Yagi Wood antenna, the half wave dipole, to which the power is fed, or through which the power is taken. This is acting as a driven element. Then this is reflector having height five percent more than the driven element. These are the directors. Each one them having a height five percent less than the other. And this antenna structure forms a Yagi Wood antenna. This is the horizontal rod. This horizontal rod that is holding or uh, through which you, can, you make the clamps over here to hold this. Directors, these are the directors whose height is five percent less than driven element. These are directors, this is reflector whose height is five percent more than driven element. Now, if you see carefully, and these are the clamps over here. So you can keep n number of directors in this way, which increases the directivity of the antenna. But as you place more number of directors here, this half wave dipole gets loaded. What is the input impedance of the half wave dipole? 73 ohm. Because of this loading concept, the impedance will decrease to around 25 ohm. But you know this is connected to the cable which we try to keep it at 73 ohm for impedance matching but because of loading this is drastically going down which will lead to loss of information so Bhaskar in order not to have loss of information what we do is this half wave dipole is replaced by a folded dipole the half wave dipole is replaced by a folded dipole thereby for folded dipole input impedance is 292 ohm. Even after loading, it will come down to the standard value of 73 ohm. So that's the advantage that you have by having high input impedance. Yes, dear. Uh, Bhaskar, tell me, is that clear? Is that clear? Now you see input impedance, input impedance of n fold antenna, input impedance of n fold antenna is dash ohm. For n fold dipole, its input impedance is given by 
n square times of z11 z11 is input impedance of half wave dipole so what is asking input impedance of n fold dipole antenna is n squared times of 73 option b is the answer <laughs> this is a bit late night no that's the reason and uh, what's your name dear this is a bit late no that's that's one of the reason and people find many reasons not to watch very less students will be interested to watch live anyways uh, what's your name dear half wave dipole antenna is a dash antenna half wave dipole antenna is a dash antenna half wave dipole antenna definitely a narrow band antenna whereas folded dipole acts as impedance compensation network is a wide band antenna but half wave dipole is a narrow band antenna option a is the answer abhishek srivastava is it the same abhishek srivastava i used to know previously my student abhishek srivastava are you the same is this your first session dear first session from me or had you gone through any of the sessions previously i know one abhishek srivastava i am not sure that you are the same one or not Oh, <laughs> how are you? How are you? First session. Oh, fine. One hundred and six hours of recording is already done. Abhishek on EMFT on our Gate Conqueror channel. Please find find time to go through it. Had created three playlist. the first playlist that was created on module 1 elements of emf theory complete syllabus for triple e the part of syllabus for ec where we are designed total of 40 videos Fifty hours of recording. And in module two, EM wave propagation. We recorded eight videos. Eighteen hours of recording. Module five. antennas and optical fiber communication 18 videos and 38 hours of recording so near about if you try to count up the number of hours that we thought for emft 50 18 38 total 106 hours 
of recordings are available in three different playlist this is one playlist this is one more this is one more and i'm planning to teach 114 hours more only on emft as you are saying this is the first class uh, srivastava you can just go through you can just go through those playlist is that clear Abhishek, let me know. Is that clear? Yes. Folded dipole antenna is a dash antenna. I told you. Half wave dipole antenna. Is a narrow band antenna. folded dipole antenna is a wide band antenna it acts as a impedance compensation network it's a wide band antenna for a folded tripole antenna the input impedance is please try out and tell me abhishek can you answer for a folded tripole i'll try to fill up the water emergency here i'll try to fill up the water just try to find the answer meanwhile i'll come back i'll try to fill up the water bottle okay Okay, dear. Are you ready? Okay. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, I was just uh, trying to fill up the water bottle. Fine. Uh, you got the answer. Anyone got the answer? Yes, dear. So, how to find the answer? For a folded tripole, the input impedance is 
folded trifold input impedance zn in is equal to n square times of z11 given it is a folded trifold for a folded trifold n is 3 3 square 9 times of z11 input impedance of half wave dipole 73 ohm this will be 657 ohm zn will be 657 ohm question number 17 option c is the answer the amount of power radiated the amount of power radiated by half wave dipole and folded dipole or dash for given value of current always remember one thing dear for a given value of current for a given value of current the amount of power radiated is same for both half wave dipole and folded dipole the amount of power radiated by half wave dipole and folded dipole are equal for a given value of current they radiate same amount of power but current in each pole varies thereby it have it will have influence on impedance that's a different story clear if a 10 amp of current is fed to a folded tripole If a 10 amp of current is fed to a folded tripole folded tripole looks something like this just a rough diagram folded tripole current fed is I current that is coming out is I these are three half wave dipoles in parallel therefore in each pole the current will be I by 3, I by 3 and I by 3 so if you feed I is 10 amp if 10 amp of current is fed to a folded tripole then the amount of current in each pole I by 3, 3.33 amp got it Just let me know. Is that clear? Yes, correct. Abhishek, correct, 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 correct. Next question. A folded dipole, a folded dipole of unequal radii, so it is unequal radii, the folded dipole is in this way, unequal radii. Unequal radii looks like this. Folded dipole with unequal radii.
folded dipole with an equal radii in the case of unequal radii diameter d1 diameter d2 unequal radii are there the input impedance is dash ohm please find out anyone can answer this abhishek folded dipole with unequal radii do you know the formula for an equal radii an equal radii z in is equal to z11 into 1 plus r2 by r1 whole square this is input impedance for an equal radii z11 is input impedance of half wave dipole this is under whole 1 plus r2 by r1 whole square is called impedance transformation ratio is called impedance transformation ratio Now substitute and tell me the answer. Z in is equal to Z one one seventy three ohm plus one plus R two is two times of R one two R one by R one one plus two whole square seventy three into nine six fifty seven ohm six fifty seven ohm option D is the answer. Clear? Is it clear? With an equal radii, the achievable impedance transformation ratio is anyone with an equal radii. With an equal radii. impedance transformation ratio that is achievable is between how many times to how many times dia 1.5 times to 25 times very important question with unequal radii the achievable impedance transformation ratio Lies between one point five times to twenty five times. Option B is the answer. Clear. In a folded dipole with unequal radii, the value of R two. that can be achieved is now i'll tell you i'll we will discuss in detail input impedance of a folded dipole z in is equal to z11 into 1 plus r2 by r1 whole square r1 and r2 are given that means we are having unequal radii 
केस वन आर टू इज टू टाइम्स ऑफ आर वन एंड यू नो द केस ऑफ इक्वल रेडियाई इन द केस ऑफ इक्वल रेडियाई जेड इन इज एन स्क्वेयर टाइम्स ऑफ जेड वन वन एन आर नंबर ऑफ पोल्स एन आर नंबर ऑफ पोल्स इन द फोल्डेड डाइपोल नाउ दिस इज फॉर इक्वल रेडियाई बट वेन यू गो फॉर अनइक्वल रेडियाई आर टू इज टू टाइम्स ऑफ आर वन सब्सिट्यूट जेड इन इज थ्री स्क्वेर टाइम्स ऑफ जेड वन वन That means what? It is acting like what? A tripole with equal radii. R two is three times of R one. R two is three times of R one. Substitute. This will become four square times of Z one one. Quadrupole. R two is four times of R one. Z n will become five square times of Z one one. Pentapole. Now more than R two is four times of R one. We can't do because practically there will be manufacturing defect, manufacturing problem to manufacture the value with more extension. Already R two is four times of R one. Means R one is very thin. so it practically it becomes very difficult so maximum you can go is r2 is four times of r1 reverse r2 can be smaller by four times r2 is 1 by 4 times of r1 this is what you can do and uh, for example if you take 1 by 4 let me see zn is equal to Z one one into R two is one by four times of R one. One plus one by four whole square. Z n is Z one one into five by four whole square. Twenty five by sixteen. Z n is Approximately one point five times of Z one one. This is extreme limit. R two is four times of R one. How much you got? Z n is twenty five times of Z one one. This is when R two is equal to four times of R one. Z n is one point five times of Z one one. This is when R two is one by four times of R one. In this case, impedance transformation ratio maximum value possible was twenty five, and here impedance transformation ratio minimum value possible is one point five. Impedance transformation ratio minimum value is one point five, maximum is twenty five. So the range of impedance transformation ratio minimum one point five times two, maximum of twenty five times. You get one point five and R two is R one by four. You get twenty five and R two is four times of R one. Now you see in folded dipole with an equal radii, the value of R two that can be achieved is it can be between one by four times of R one to four times of R one. Very important question. Is that clear?
Yes, everyone tell me, is that clear? In a folded dipole, with spacing of 2 cm, now spacing is also considered. Folded dipole antenna. Now spacing is also given, previously this is diameter, D1, D2, but now spacing is also given. See if you have equal radii, if you have equal radii, input impedance Z is simply N squared times of Z11. Simply n square times of z11. When you have unequal radii, zn is 1 plus r2 by r1 whole square of z11. Unequal radii. The spacing considered Z in is equal to 1 plus log A by R1 log A by R2 whole square of Z11. This term is called as usual impedance transformation ratio. Now you see given spacing is 2 cm, R1 is 4 cm, R2 is 8 cm, Z in is equal to 1 plus log A by R1, log A by R2, whole square times of Z11. This is Z in is 1 plus log 1 by 2 or 2 power minus 1 log 1 by 4 4 power minus 1 Okay. This log m power n, this minus 1 will go there. Of z11 times. Z in is equal to 1 plus log 2 by log 4 of z11. This whole square here, okay. Z in is 1 plus log 2 by log 4 is log 2 square. 1 plus 1 by 2 whole square of Z11. Z in is 9 by 4 times of Z11. Plus Z in is 9 by 4 times of 73. Z in is 657 by 4 ohms. Option D is the answer. Clear?
in a folded dipole with spacing of 2 cm spacing even is given as 2 cm R1 4 cm R2 16 cm find impedance transformation ratio Z is equal to 1 plus log A by R1 by log A by R2 whole square of Z11. Z is 1 plus log A by R1 log 2 by 4 log of 1 by 2. Log A by R2 2 by 16 or 1 by 4. Zn is one plus log two to the power of minus one minus log two by this is log four to the power of minus one minus log four. This is minus and minus cancel log two by log four. This two square two log two one plus one by two whole square of z one one. Any correction? This is 16, I am right. Okay, one second. Log A by R1 by log A by R2. R2 is 16. So, log A by R1, 2 by 4, 1 by 2. Log A by R2, 2 by 16, 1 by 8. 8. 8. This is 2 cube. 1 plus log 2 by log 8 is 2 cube. 3 log 2, 1 plus 1 by 3 whole square of Z11. If a Zn is equal to 4 by 3 whole square of Z11, 16 by 9 times of Z11. In this impedance transformation ratio, 16 by 9. Impedance transformation ratio is 16 by 9. Question number 24, option A is the answer. Now try and solve this dear. A folded dipole with unequal radii folded dipole with unequal radii R2 is 3 times of R1 we have input impedance equal to input impedance a folded dipole with equal radii. R2 is 3 times of R1. Zn is equal to Z11 into 1 plus R2 by R1 whole square. Z11 into 1 plus R2 is 3 times of R1. 1 plus 3. Whole square. This is 4 times of Z1. 4 square times of Z11. That means the input impedance is equal to folded dipole with equal radii of n is equal to 4. <coughs> R2 is 3 times of R1 is equal to input impedance of equal to input impedance of folded dipole with equal radii of how many elements? 4 elements. Clear? Which of these act as a bandwidth compensation circuit? Parallel LC, series LC, parallel RC and series RC. Please answer here. Which of these acts as a bandwidth compensation circuit? Anyone?
which of these acts as a bandwidth compensation circuit a parallel lc circuit a parallel lc circuit acts as a bandwidth compensation circuit above resonant frequency parallel lc exhibits above resonant frequency parallel lc exhibits parallel lc exhibits above resonant frequency parallel ex- parallel lc exhibits capacitive reactance option b is the answer below resonant frequency the parallel lc circuit exhibits inductive reactance above resonant frequency antenna exhibits exactly opposite of lc circuit above resonant frequency antenna exhibits inductive reactance inductive reactance just omega into l frequency increases inductive reactance increases by adding some resistance to the parallel lc circuit the quality factor the quality factor when you consider inductive circuit quality factor omega l by r energy stored omega l by dissipation r now for a capacitor circuit 1 by omega cr if you see these two equations for inductive circuit omega l by r for capacitor 1 by omega c 1 by omega cr for inductive circuit quality factor omega l by r energy stored by dissipated for capacitive 1 by omega c by r or 1 by omega c r energy stored by energy dissipated now if you see by adding some resistance to the parallel lc circuit you are adding some resistance in both the cases what happens to quality factor it decreases by adding some resistance to the lc circuit quality factor decreases in yagi antenna folded dipole antenna is used as anyone yagi wood antenna in yagi wood antenna folded dipole antenna is used as driven element in yagi wood antenna folded dipole antenna is used as driven element If you take a Yagi wood antenna, in which this folded dipole antenna is acting as driven element, is that clear? So. 
So uh, Abhishek was asking now. Uh, let me explain him. What are the videos available? Gate Conqueror channel. Especially for EMFT. In EMFT, completed module 1. Which are elements of EMF theory. In this we are covered static field theory and time varying field theory. In static field theory we are covered Electrostatics, and Magnetostatics. Electrostatics and Magnetostatics put together is called Static Field Theory, in which we have derived four Maxwell equation. Equation number one, closed surface integral of d dot ds is equal to volume integral of rho v dv. Integral form of Maxwell first equation. Differential form delta D is equal to rho V. Source Gauss law. Gauss law for electric fields. Second one, closed loop integral of E dot DL is equal to 0. Del cross E is 0. E is irrotational. E is a rotational vector. Third one. Closed loop integral of h dot dl is equal to surface integral of j plus jd dot ds. Differential form del cross h is equal to j plus jd. j is sigma e. jd is dou d by dou t. Fourth one is non-existence of magnetic monopole. Magnetic monopole cannot exist. From that we got closed surface integral of B dot ds is zero. Flux is generated. The net flux generated by permanent magnet is zero. Differential form del dot B is equal to zero. B is solenoidal field. E is irrotational field and B is solenoidal field. This we have derived in the static field theory. Along with that we have derived Laplace and Poisson's equations. And also we have derived boundary conditions. And also we have derived about capacitors and inductors. And in time varying fields, we had modified equation 2 and equation 3. For time varying fields also, equation 1 and 4 will hold good. Equation 2 is changed by Faraday's law. According to Faraday's law, induced EMF with a closed path is equal to rate of change of flux linkage. But later one more scientist called Heinrich Friedrich Emil Lenz introduced a negative science stating that the induced EMF will always oppose the flux produced it. You got minus d lambda by dt. The solving which by solving this we get Closed loop integral of E dot DL is equal to 
सरफेस इंटीग्रल ऑफ माइनस जो बी बाई डोटी डॉट डी एस डिफरेंशियल फॉर्म डेलक्रॉस इज इक्वल टू माइनस जो बी बाई डोटी नेक्स्ट इज इनकन्सिस्टेंसी ऑफ एम्बियस लॉ ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज फेरेडेज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इंटीग्रल फॉर्म क्लोज लूप इंटीग्रल ऑफ एच डॉट डी एल इज इक्वल टू सर्फेस इंटीग्रल ऑफ जे प्लस जे डी डॉट डी एस डिफरेंशियल फॉर्म डेलक्रॉस एच इज इक्वल टू जे प्लस जे डी जे इज सिग्मा कंडक्शन करेंट डेन्सीटी जे डी इज डोटी बै डोटी डिस्प्लेसमेंट करेंट डेन्सीटी So all this we have discussed in module one. One second. The, so that is what we took in module one. Module two. So EM wave propagation. Module one. I told you previously. Total number of videos forty. Total recording time fifty hours. Module two is EM wave propagation, which were completed. EM wave propagation in free space. For free space, what is the condition of value of sigma d? Free space. What is the value of sigma? Zero. Epsilon r one and mu r is one. Under EM wave propagation for free space, we have derived the expressions for alpha. Alpha is zero, of course, for free space. That we have derived beta. velocity and eta second one em wave propagation in materials sigma not equal to 0 epsilon not greater than 1 and mu r greater than 1 In which we have derived values of alpha, beta, velocity, eta, loss tangent, 
but also called as dissipation factor and also we derived generalized ex expressions for alpha and beta we also seen em wave propagation in good conductors good conductors means sigma is far far greater than omega epsilon uh, derived values like alpha beta velocity penetration depth delta surface resistance which got as 1 by sigma delta and intrinsic impedance theta and as in em wave propagation good dielectrics sigma far far less than omega epsilon we derived alpha beta velocity and eta also we have seen em wave propagation in perfect dielectrics sigma is 0 epsilon are greater than 1 mu are greater than 1 all this we had completed along with that we had also completed pointing theorem in previous all concepts completed theory derivations and previous year questions and practice questions pointing theorem with completed theory practice questions we need to do two topics are left out here other than the problems of pointing theorem two topics are left out wave polarization reflection and refraction of plane waves which will complete in the next week and in module 5 in module 5 we are covered antennas and wave propagation in antennas we have covered the main concepts like antenna arrays and types which includes amplifier array broadfire array hansen and udiard array binomial array two element and n element all the cases and case studies seven sister antennas the seven sisters folded dipole yagi wood helical micro strip array antenna horn parabolic reflector and lens antenna these are the seven systems we have discussed beyond which we have discussed about resonant antennas like monopole and dipole antennas non resonant antennas like v inverted v and rhombic antennas and also we discussed 
antenna measurements in detail where you have measured gain and directivity we discussed gain and directivity directivity involves a double integral we had used graphical numerical methods to derive or determine directivity which are r and slice method conical cut method and under wave propagation we discussed principal modes of propagation which are ground wave propagation sky wave propagation and space wave propagation we have discussed special modes of propagation which are tropospheric scatter ionospheric scatter and duct propagation and and uh, what about besides this we also derived refractive index of ionosphere mechanism of bending of ionosphere or waves in ionosphere virtual height critical frequency maximum visible frequency skip distance skip distance and optimum working frequency deeply discussed about ionospheric abnormalities fading and path loss calculation the range of space wave propagation expression for received electric field strength eight root p hd hr by lambda d square this we discussed under wave propagation also numerous number of practice questions we had done this wave propagation module 2 8 videos 18 hours this was 40 videos 50 hours 8 videos 18 hours and this is 18 videos 38 hours so total 106 hours 50 plus 18 plus 38 total 106 hours are available on emft on in gate conqueror channel an academy offers two paid platforms what is plus subscription other is iconic subscription in plus subscription you got to have the face time of legendary faculties in the form of live classes weekly test structured courses unlimited access rank into batches and crash courses in iconic you have all these features along with that your personal coach for one on one guidance dedicated outline educators to clear your doubts prepared study material personalized test analysis study booster sessions and study planner going for plus subscription or iconic subscription I recommend you to go for a no cost gmi 
the total cost will be divided by number of months without any extra cost which is very much student friendly and also you can use our team code knr10 to avail extra 10% off and uniquely you will also find all the team support if you use our team code knr10 with the iconic subscription you get a personal coach thereby you get one is to one live mentoring increasing your chance of getting a top rank and with every one year subscription we are giving away six months extension of the subscription dear you can use our code knr10 is our team code to get extra 10% off and if you are having any doubt in preparation journey subscription latest offers you can contact our counselor for the same this anacademy ask a doubt feature dear through which you can ask unlimited number of doubts at a stage you can ask three doubts and you can get the solution in your preferred language it's also very easy to upload your doubt click crop and submit a super combo offer going on with every two year subscription we are giving away one year subscription free for campus placement and id jobs with every one year subscription we are giving away six month subscription for campus placement and id jobs the rank predictor is on dia you can just log in go to get landing page click on rank predictor banner select your stream select the session and paste your paste your url the rank will be appearing the special class features includes interactive live classes polls for the learners raise hand option you never miss a class when the notification is on you can download the lecture notes when the class is done you can access any time and anywhere we introducing community dia where you where you not miss any update from your favorite educator you can download notes and practice material and you can share the feedback directly with the educator these are the new batches dear every week we start 7 to 8 new new batches these are the new batches start on 16th of february resilience batch for gate 2023 electrical explain bilingual resilience for gate 2023 ec explain bilingual ascent for gate 2024 ec explain bilingual ascent for gate 2024 electrical explain bilingual evolve gate 2023 electrical explain bilingual evolve gate 2023 ec explain bilingual these are the new batches across all the other branches you can use our team code knr10 to avail extra 10% off dia and also you'll get the complete team support thank you all thank you all for joining and good night